pulling. Now these teeth aren't gonna let us do it. I don't think we're gonna get her. Get back your lines off, we're done. We'll get off the road. Yeah, this is Jamie. Ah, we can't get her. There just ain't no way we're gonna get this prick up without the rotator. Okay, so bucket truck, this was Alberta. And what Adam calls you and says, we can't get the thing up. Yes, yes. Is it heavy? What's the problem with the thing? Well, the problem we're having in Alberta really is we've sent two 30-ton wreckers there, but everything in Alberta weighs a gazillion tons. And the bucket truck probably weighs I'm thinking 45,000 pounds empties. It's a big load for them. And it's tall and it's, the angles are tough too, right? Right, right. Let's, well, let's look at the video and see what happens here. We needed the rotator there because the bucket truck just has a really significant gross weight. And it's, and it's a big, expensive, heavy machine. So you first get there, what do you think when you see it? It's, it's a big job, that's what I see. And it's a perfect rotator job, really. I'll back up. Yeah. You back up in the front. And then we're going to block the road. Those Toyotas helped you out? Yeah. yeah. And they were good in the cold? Yeah, we had no issues with them in the cold whatsoever. Was there any damage to the truck on its side like that? Very little damage, surprisingly enough. I'm just looking at this here, and you've rigged to the center of the thing. What we call the house. The strongest part of that whole unit is around that house. So we use some big nylon straps. Nylon straps are gonna make sure we don't do any damage to the house. So the house is like the frame within the frame. Right, you know, the crane or articulating piece of that truck is its strongest point. And they build that all into the subframe and right. into the frame of the truck. So we're grabbing onto that and you know, it's got a lot of leverage, you're up high, it's gonna pull it over. Mm -hmm. You see we're pulling low too on here. Yeah. I call it power buckling, so mm -hmm. we're, we're putting a downward force on it. I'm pulling, hold it. Is this snatch block gonna get caught under the tire? So Chuck is lying here. Take the one line off. Okay, you got it halfway and then you stopped. Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, where he's hooked up the chain onto the axle is too short. So I don't want the, the front end to come down right on the chain. It's about being trapped. How do you get it out after the weight's on it? We've brought the weight up and we're almost up with it. So the, the, the force needed to pull it over the rest of the way is very little. Mm -hmm. You know, as we're coming down, it's, I'm realizing, okay, this, this wheel's gonna come down on the chain or on the snatch block. So we want to remove that and not have that headache. Do you have to lift it again here to try to get it out or are you going to be able to get that out now? No, now what we have to do with this now is pull it, winch it around and out mm -hmm. and use the rotator as a steady hold on it. And, and as we're pulling it around, we can use the, the rotator's boom arm to swing with the load. You know? It wasn't a complex job, it was just a heavy job, I think, is what you're saying. Working the first real winter there taught us a lot about what we need to do for next winter. Now we've ordered two 50-ton trucks that are heavier. One's a tri-drive with an SP850, which is a side puller. Mm -hmm. um, we brought the rotator back to Hope again, and we're retooling it, and we're retooling to fit the needs of the area. We're finding that 30 tons just aren't doing it. We need 50 tons. Working out, eh? We're back. The team is firing on all cylinders. From a few months ago to where we are now, we're going to the moon, Alice. <laughs>